Hello and welcome. You might have seen videos of people flying using wingsuits. Maybe falling suits would be a better description. The modern wingsuit, which was first developed in the late 1990s, creates a surface area with fabric between the legs and under the arms. Wingsuits are sometimes referred to as birdman suits, squirrel suits, or bat suits. The average surface area increases lift and inflated air cells give shape to the wing. A wingsuit flight usually starts with a fall from height, such as from an aircraft, helicopter, balloon, or a base jump from a tall cliff or mountaintop. It ends when the parachute is deployed, allowing a safe return to Earth, hopefully. The first recorded attempt at wingsuit flying was on the 4th of February 1912 when Franz Reichelt jumped from the Eiffel Tower, alas, to his death. In 1930, American Rix Finney used an early wingsuit to increase horizontal movement and maneuverability during a parachute jump. These early wingsuits used materials such as canvas, wood, silk, steel and whalebone. They were not very reliable, although some birdmen, notably Clem Sohn and Leo Valentin, claimed to have glided for miles. In the mid-1990s, the modern wingsuit was developed by Patrick de Gay Arden of France, adapted from the model used by John Carter. In 1997, the Bulgarian Sami Popov designed and built a wingsuit that had a larger wing between the legs and longer wings on the arms. Chuck Rags built a version that incorporated hard ribs inside the wing airfoils. Although these more rigid wings were better able to keep their shape in flight, this made the wingsuit heavier and more difficult to fly. Flying together for the first time, Popoff and Rags showcased their designs side by side at the World Freefall Convention at Illinois in August 1999. Both designs performed well. Jari Kuzma of Finland and Robert Peknik of Croatia teamed up to create a wingsuit that was safe and accessible to all skydivers. Kuzma established Birdman International and their wingsuit was the first to be offered to the general skydiving public. Birdman was the first manufacturer to develop an instructor program. The aim of the instructor program was to remove the stigma that wingsuits were dangerous and to provide wingsuit beginners with a way to safely enjoy what was once considered the most dangerous feat in the skydiving world. Wingsuit manufacturers, squirrel wingsuits, Tony suits, wingsuits, Phoenix Fly, Fly Your Body, and Nitro Rigging have also instituted training programs. A wingsuit pilot free falls wearing both a wingsuit and a parachute equipment. The details of a wingsuit launch depends on whether it is a skydive from an aircraft or a base jump from a fixed object. From a base, it takes time to build up airspeed to inflate the wingsuit and provide aerodynamic control. So exiting a cliff in a proper orientation is critical. With training, wingsuit pilots can achieve sustained glide ratio of 3 to 1 or more. By comparison, a Cessna 152 glide ratio is three times better at 9 to 1. By adjusting body configuration, wingsuit flyers can alter both their forward speed and fall rate. The pilot manipulates these flight characteristics by changing the shape of the torso, de-arching and rolling the shoulders and moving hips and knees, changing the angle of attack in which the wingsuit flies the relative wind and by the amount of tension applied to the fabric wings of the suit also helps. There is no stability in the yaw axis, so poor flying technique can result in a spin that requires active effort on the part of the skydiver to stop. A typical skydiver's terminal velocity in belly-to-earth orientation 
ranges from 180 to 225 kilometers per hour, but wearing a wingsuit, this can reduce to 100 kilometers per hour forward flight. Locke Jean Albert of France was one of the first flyers who deliberately flew close to cliff faces for added thrill, that now being known as proximity flying, or I call madness. If that wasn't thrilling enough, consider jet-powered wingsuits. In October 2009 in Finland, Visa Pavainen jumped from a hot air balloon in a wingsuit with two small turbojet engines attached to his feet. Each engine provided 160 newtons of thrust. Pavainen achieved approximately 30 seconds of horizontal flight with no noticeable loss of altitude. Christian Stadler from Germany invented the Vega V3 wingsuit system that uses an electronic adjustable hydrogen peroxide rocket which provides 1,000 newtons of thrust. His first successful powered wingsuit jump was in 2007 when he reached horizontal speeds of over 255 kilometers per hour. Now for some records. The longest verified wingsuit base jump was 7.5 kilometers by the American Dean Potter in November 2011. Potter jumped from the Eiger Mountain and spent 3 minutes and 20 seconds in flight descending 2,800 meters. The fastest flight was in May 2017 when British wingsuit pilot Fraser Corsan set the fastest speed in a wingsuit of 396 kilometers per hour. The longest flight was in April 2012 when Colombian skydiver Jonathan Flores set a duration of 9 minutes 6 seconds from an altitude of 11,358 meters. The greatest absolute distance flown in a wingsuit is 32.094 kilometers set by Kyle Lopez in the USA May 2016. There were 25 fatalities in 2013 alone, many of whom were very experienced. Despite training and regulation, wingsuit base jumping remains a precarious pastime. A 2012 University of Colorado study of wingsuit base jumping found that there was one severe injury for every 500 jumps. So, if you are dying to get into this sport, know that coaches require students to have had a minimum of 200 parachute jumps prior to acceptance. This definitely is a sport for the adrenaline junkie. I can only imagine the sheer thrill of flying that fast. Thank you for watching.